Adventures of Sam Spade, Detective. Brought to you by Wild Root Cream Oil Hair Tonic, the non-alcoholic hair tonic that contains lanolin. Wild Root Cream Oil, again and again, the choice of men who put good grooming first. Sam Spade Detective Agency. This is Mad Scientific Detective number 137596. Sam, no matter what anyone says, I'll stand by you. You're nothing of the sort. Not scientific? Of course not. You're two-fisted. Well, thanks, Effie. And that ain't all, Effie. I was actually mistaken for a convolutional melancholiac. <gasps> oh, Sam, are you all right now? Wrong diagnosis, Angel. It turned out to be melancholia catatonica. Oh, you poor darling. What is that? Well, it's a thing where you lie motionless and silent with fixed eyes and indifference to surroundings. Unquote. Sam, what happened to you? What hospital are you in? Can I bring you anything? No, Effie, I am now at large. Pull down the blinds, check the corridors for men in little white coats, and set a bottle in the window if the coast is clear. Oh. I'll be right down to dictate my report on the mad scientist caper. <laughs> Dashiell Hammett, America's leading detective fiction writer and creator of Sam Spade, the hard-boiled private eye, and William Spear, radio's outstanding producer-director of mystery and crime drama, join their talents to make your hair stand on end with the adventures of Sam Spade. Presented by the makers of Wild Root Cream Oil for the hair. Nobody has to tell you that a neat personal appearance can have a lot to do with helping you get ahead on the job. Now, the first step to a good appearance is well-groomed hair. And I mean hair that's groomed with Wild Root Cream Oil. Wild Root Cream Oil always grooms the hair neatly and naturally. It relieves dryness, removes loose dandruff. Yes, men, to look your best at all times, spruce up with Wild Root Cream Oil hair tonic. Again and again, the choice of men who put good grooming first. And now, with Howard Duff starring as Spade, Wild Root brings to the air the greatest private detective of them all in the adventures of Sam Spade. <laughs> Come in, Sam. The coast is clear. Where are you? Why is it so dark in here? Oh, I had to put the lights out. The blind stuck. I couldn't get it down. The heat's off, Effie. Let there be light. Oh, oh, I'm so glad. Now, let me look at you. Don't look at me like that and stop whispering. Oh, Sam. Did you get me all upset like that just for a joke? It's no joke, sweetheart. You really sick? Yeah, just sick of some of the types I made in this business. Oh, that. Uh, date, uh, July 25, 1948. To Detective Lieutenant Dundee, homicide detail, San Francisco Police, from Samuel Spade, license number 137596. Subject, the mad scientist caper. I worry so. Uh, dear Dundee, he, uh, looked like a mad scientist, and that's exactly what he was. His eyes had a wild gleam in them, his hair was a wild tangle, and he was wearing a wild assortment of clothing that looked as if they'd been slept in in shifts. He leaned across the desk at me and said, They have stolen my secret formula. They have? Gee, that's too bad. Oh, you think I'm crazy? I don't know yet, I just met you. My name is Raymond Fox. Did that mean anything to you? Raymond Fox, uh, yeah, I think it does, but I don't quite remember what. I invented the helioscope. Helioscope. No, that wasn't it. I also synthesized hydroxylamide photocraniton. That was it. Yes, but unfortunately, production costs were prohibitive. Uh huh. But you didn't let that discourage you. Oh no, 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 indeed. You see, after a brief illness, I was back in my laboratory, perfecting my greatest contribution to science. What may prove to be the greatest contribution of science to humanity. I call it penetron. Penetron. That is what they have stolen. The secret formula for penetron. Penetron. Huh? Now. uh... What exactly is penetron, Mr. Fox, and who are they? <clears throat> well, penetron is a plastic with a molecular structure which repels atomic radiation more efficiently than lead, yet weighs less than aluminium. Oh, that. Do you realize the significance of this? Well, uh... And imagine, imagine a motor no larger than a cigar box with a power potential that even I don't believe, but they do. Who's they? Grierson Enterprises. Now, how do I know this? When I applied to the patent office to protect my discovery, I received this letter. Here, go on, read it for yourself. 
Uh, Commissioner of Patents, Washington, D.C. Uh, dear Mr. Fox, your application for patent on formula designated under the trade name Penetron is hereby rejected. Uh-huh. You see. Both formula and trade name, together with descriptive material identical to yours, have been registered by Mr. Albert Grierson, Grierson Enterprises, San Francisco. <laughs> Very truly yours, George Sherman, Acting Deputy Assistant Commissioner. There, there, there. You, you see? Uh, yes. You don't need a detective, Mr. Fox. What you need is a good patent lawyer. Lawyer? Huh. I have one, a legal ball of fire named Roscoe Manning. You know this scoundrel? Yeah, he's got an okay reputation. And I am paying for it, $3,000 in retainers. And now he tells me he can do nothing. Insufficient evidence, he says. What is this outfit, Grierson Enterprises? Yeah, a snare and a delusion with, with rented furniture, unscientific ventilation, and dirty work at the switchboard. Mm-hmm. How did they get hold of your formula? Well, it must have been while I was ill. They came and took it away. Out of your laboratory? Oh, well, what does it matter? Where? I've got to start someplace. Start with the man. I promise you he's a crook. If he steals from me, he's stolen from others. If we can prove that, then I have a case. Well, I can't promise you anything, Mr. Fox, but I'll see what I can do. Uh, uh, Will $100 be enough for your retainer? Too much. Twenty-five now on the balance if I can do anything for you. I doubted if I could even earn the 25, but if he wanted to gamble, it was okay with me. The officers of Greer's and Enterprises were pretty much as he described them, a beautiful front, especially at the switchboard. Greerson Enterprises, good afternoon. No, Mr. Greerson's out of town. No, I don't know when to expect it. I'll be right with you. That's good news. Greerson Enterprises? No, he is not. No, I do not, and he doesn't want to talk to you in any case, Mr. Manning. Oh, if it would just stop. Can't you shut it off? I might as well. Nobody seems to believe me anyway. You aren't looking for him, too, I hope. Oh, please, just tell me you're selling magazines or collecting salvage or just anything. My card. Oh, detective. Mr. Grierson hasn't done anything, has he? That's what I want to find out. My client says he swiped his secret formula. Oh, not that maniac. You don't look the type. You know he's mad, don't you? Maybe yes, maybe no. Personally, I'm crazy about money. Mad money, pin money, or dirty money. Uh, Your employer didn't happen to leave any lying around, did he? No, but he has a charge account at a bar downstairs in the building, and it's nearly 5 o'clock. Could you cross-examine me there? I thanked her as gallantly as I could under the circumstances. She said, wait here, I won't be a minute. And while she was gone, I made a quick frisk of the office. The file cabinet was empty. Grierson's desk contained nothing but two unsharpened pencils, tobacco crumbs, a rubber band, some rusty paper clips, an old gas bill, a glass ampule, broken, labeled sodium denadrine for intravenous injection, and a business card from one Roscoe Manning, attorney at law. I stuck the card in my pocket, went back to the switchboard, and in less time than it takes to tell, I was calling her Lois, and she was calling me Sam over cocktails for two. And that's all I know about it. I didn't think anything about his taking his correspondence out of the files. He often took work home with him. Mm-hmm. When was the last time you saw him? Oh, it's been nearly six weeks. You haven't heard from him in all that time? Mm. He was with Mr. Fox just before he left. They had a terrible quarrel. But then Mr. Grayson managed to get him calmed down, and they left the office together. And that's the last time you saw Grayson? Huh? Yes, and it's all very strange. What did that maniac tell you? That Grayson swiped his invention. Do you believe that? I didn't even believe in the invention. Now I'm beginning to think it was worth stealing. Oh, Mr. Grierson wouldn't... He's a brilliant man, you know. Uh, What else has he invented? Well, I don't know. He always had a lot of projects, but of course he never took me into his confidence. Just exactly what is your job? Oh, it's quite simple, really. I just tell people he's an in. Yeah, look, uh, sweetheart, you really mean to tell me it never occurred to you that there might be something slightly fishy about Grierson Enterprises? I know, why should it? Because there's a smell of red herring up there. It's in the air. You mean Mr. Grayson's a crook? Well, what does that make me? Worry that out on his time. Drink up. She looked as if she were telling the truth. Though with women, especially blue-eyed women, that doesn't always mean anything. If she had anything more to tell, she obviously wasn't ready yet to tell it. I asked her to come up and listen to my Herb Jeffries records. She said my apartment needed a woman's touch. I handed her a broom. She hit me on the head with it and left. And so to bed. Up the times and phoned my client. He wasn't in. 
Then I phoned a guy I know who sometimes knows about things and asked him what sodium denadrine was. He said it was a sedative and or truth serum, a mental-type drug. I wondered what Grierson had been using it for during office hours. I also wondered what else he'd been spending money for. I phoned another guy who knows about other things, and he called me back with the name of Grierson's bank, Golden Gate Trust. An hour later, to my surprise, I actually had something to go on. Because in the past six weeks, checks totaling 50,000 bucks had been deposited to Grierson's account, all drawn on the Citrus Exchange Bank of San Anselmo, and all bearing the signature of one Carl Birdwell, M.D. He wasn't hard to find. It was a big place on the outskirts, and the sign on the gate said, Mary F. Hotchkiss Hospital for the Mentally Deranged. Dr. Birdwell's cottage was one of five without bars on the window. He was spraying his roses. Ah, you're that cystidectomy of Dr. Kobler's. How are those convulsions? Uh, Coordination all right? I uh, can't complain. Got the use of your fingers back? Good. Pick up those shears. I want all those ragged edges cut off the hedges. Well, why don't you uh, hire a gardener out of those uh, checks to Grierson and use up all your ready cash? Eh? Uh, I thought you were the cystidectomy. Good Lord, you're that convolutional melancholiac. You're not allowed out on the grounds. Guard! Guard! Now, yes. wait a minute, doctor. Please. Matter. This one acting up. Take him back. I sent for the cystidectomy. This is the wrong man. You're huh? crazy. Come Don't on. Let go of me. I'm not a patient here. I'm a detective. Yeah, and I'm I'm Sherlock Holmes. Come on now, back to the violent war. Come on, lay off. I got an office in San Francisco. I can prove it. One three seven five nine six. Okay, Doctor Watson. But come on, come on. <laughs> And in more time than it takes to tell, due to the guard's jujitsu, I was disrobed, straight-jacketed, and rolled into a wet sheet. A full-fledged inmate of the Mary F. Hotchkiss Hospital for the Mentally Deranged, which is exactly where I belong for having taken Mr. Fox's 25 bucks. The makers of Wild Root Cream Oil are presenting the weekly Sunday adventure of Dashiell Hammett's famous private detective... Sam Spade. If you want the well-groomed look that helps you get ahead socially and on the job, listen. Recently, thousands of people from coast to coast who bought Wild Root Cream Oil for the first time were asked, how does Wild Root Cream Oil compare with the hair tonic you previously used? Better than four out of five who replied said they preferred Wild Root Cream Oil. And no wonder. Wild Root Cream Oil grooms the hair neatly and naturally, relieves annoying dryness, and removes loose dandruff. What's more, non-alcoholic Wild Root Cream Oil is the only leading hair tonic that contains soothing lanolin. So ask for Wild Root Cream Oil Hair Tonic. Again and again, the choice of men who put good grooming first. By the way, smart girls use Wild Root Cream Oil, too. And mothers say it's grand for training children's hair. And now, back to the mad scientist caper. Tonight's adventure with Sam Spade. I have been shot, stabbed, slashed, pistol whipped, and sapped into unconsciousness. But until you have spent a night rolled up in a wet sheet, Dundee, you don't know what punishment is. You feel hot and cold at the same time, too miserable to sleep, too exhausted to stay awake. And after four hours of it, you just give up and join the crazies pushing up the daisies. There's only one thing I can say in favor of the Mary F. Hotchkiss Hospital for the Mentally Deranged. They get the patients up early. By 6.30 in the a.m., I had been rolled out of the sheet. By quarter of seven, I had thawed out enough to be taken out of the straitjacket by an orderly. I was glad to be out of it because it was very heavy, and that gave me an idea. I picked it up and swung it. In less time than it takes to tell, I was in the orderly's uniform, out of the violent wing, and shuffling up the walk through Dr. Birdwell's rose garden and through his cottage door. Good morning, Dr. Birdwell. Good Good Lord, who let you in here? What do you want? I was trying to tell you yesterday when I was so rudely interrupted. Hey? Oh, yes, the detective. Did you say Grierson sent you? I didn't say that. I'm afraid you'll have to be absolutely specific or I can't help you. All right. My client is an inventor who claims that Mr. Grierson stole a formula from him, got a patent on it, and stands to profit to the tune of about a million bucks. The last two items check. I don't know whether Grierson's a crook or not. 
He's into you for 50,000 bucks, so you might know. Uh, this inventor. Pale eyes, contracted pupils, big mop of hair. That's a fair description. Fox. Raymond Fox. He's a patient, escaped from this hospital. That man, Mr. Spade, is a homicidal maniac. If you'll jog your memory, you may recall the case. Sacramento, 1935. Wait a minute. Chemistry professor, lab explosion? That's the case. Two of his colleagues, whom he irrationally suspected of stealing the formula for the explosive he used to blow them up. You sure they didn't? The man was adjudged hopelessly insane. He must be returned to us. He may murder Grierson, he may murder you. But he will commit a murder if he remains at large. Perhaps more than one murder. You must help us, Spade. Like you, Doctor, I can't help unless you're absolutely specific about a couple of things. Your connection with Grierson, for instance. I invested in Grierson's firm. Uh Uh-huh. How did Fox meet Grierson? He was allowed a certain degree of freedom here during his rational periods. I I guess that he went through my papers or overheard one of my conversations with Mr. Grierson. Mm Mm-hmm. Did you know he retained a lawyer? Hmm? Manning, smart patent lawyer. You must think Fox has a case. Oh, surely not. Grierson thinks so, too. You've talked to Grierson? No, but I've examined his bank statements. The bank allowed that? I told him I was Grierson's attorney. The point is, Grierson is broke. Why? Because he's paid out every penny you gave him to the order of Roscoe Manning, attorney at law. And you know what I think, doctor? Yes? I think Raymond Fox is crazy like a fox. And I had the same idea about Dr. Birdwell, but I didn't say so. I didn't feel up to spending another night in a wet sheet. I also didn't feel up to the interview that was awaiting me outside the gates. A limousine, only a little longer than a hearse, was standing at the curb. A round pink head with a gray Homburg on it bobbed out at me from the driver's seat and said, Mr. Spade? Yeah? Roscoe Manning, how'd you do? About 49975 bucks less than you've done in the caper so far. <laughs> the law is a lucrative profession, my boy. <laughs> uh, get in, I'll drive you back to town. No charge? Uh, I'll even give you some free advice, sans retainer. Well, sir, <laughs> you are an elusive chap. I've had the devil's own time catching up with you. How did you? I won't ask why. Well, I am not without resources. Now, uh, as to our mutual client, Mr. Fox, uh, obviously you've learned a good deal about him. Dr. Birdwell says he's cuckoo, and it's only a toss-up which one of us he's going to blow up first. Uh, Just about what you'd expect from a medical man. If you'd listen to as much conflicting medical testimony in court as I have, you'd take them all with a grain of salt. Or should I say, soda mint. Or uh, sodium denadrine? That's a mysterious remark. I was just trying it on for size. It didn't fit. Mm -hmm. Well, sir... Here is my proposition. As to Fox's sanity, it's of no importance. He has money, and I think he has a case. We can always get a doctor to say he's back in his right mind. Where do I fit into your scheme? You just keep looking for Grierson. And uh, watch that secretary of his. I don't trust her. Anything else? Oh, I I almost forgot. Here's $500, and here's your ticket to Chicago. (laughs) I don't know why, but somehow I got the impression that Mr. Manning was trying to get rid of me. He should have used that ticket to Chicago himself. We stopped at Sausalito for breakfast, and the condemned man ate a hearty meal. We drove the last mile through the marina district and pulled up in front of his house. Well, sir, have a nice trip. Oh, uh, take the car, Mr. Spade. I'll pick it up at the depot. Uh, goodbye. It's been charming. Goodbye. He backed across the sidewalk, waving, and I waved back. Then he went up three steps, put a key in his door, and opened it. It didn't do much damage to the house, but all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Roscoe Manning back together again. I got out of the car and just made it up the steps when it happened again. I hated the look, but I did. Where the limousine had been parked with me in it was a smoking heap of scrap metal. I then headed for the nearest phone booth and pausing only to inspect it for mines and booby traps, dialed the number of Grierson Enterprises. Grierson Enterprises. Lois, Sam Spade. Sam, darling, thank you for the present. What present? I haven't had a chance to open it yet, but I think I can guess what it is. A traveling clock. You mean a package arrived and it ticks? Oh, darling, don't be such a tease. Now, Lois, listen. Oh, all right, I'll open it now. 
Throw it out the window. No, don't do that. Pedestrians, innocent bystanders. Uh, have you got a metal wastebasket there? I think so, yes. Well, fill it up with water and throw the package into it. And ruin my lovely clock? It is not a lovely clock. It's a lovely booby trap. Oh, go on. I'm You're... serious. Manning just got one of them, and what's left of him is on the way to the morgue. Oh, I think I'm going to faint. Lois! Lois! Wake up! Pour some water on yourself! Hello, hello! <laughs> Let me through here. Come on, let me through. Lois. Lois. Oh, you're okay. Glad of that. All right, she's all right now, you people. Come on, get out of here. She's all right. Come on, get up. You're not hurt. What happened? It exploded in the water. At least you had sense enough to do what I told you to. Oh, this was a new dress. Now look at it. It looks fine here. Put this coat around you. I don't think that was a very funny joke, Sam. Neither do I. Now, uh, try and forget your clothes for a minute. And try and answer a few questions for me. There isn't much time. Sam, what is it? I want you to be very sure of this, Lois. Try and remember accurately. How many people has grass and seen since he opened this office? Well, not very many. It was hardly ever in. It's strange. Now that I think of it, I can only remember two. Mr. Yeah. Manning and that mad scientist man, Mr. Fox. Yeah, did you hear any of the conversation between Grierson and Fox? Uh, he just screamed at Mr. Grierson about how his invention had been stolen from him. Then it sounded as if they scuffled, and all of a sudden, Mr. Fox calmed down. Mm -hmm. When they came out, his eyes looked funny, as if he'd been hypnotized. Yeah. Uh, what does uh, Grierson look like? Oh, he must have been quite handsome at one time. He's sort of like Gregory Peck with a mustache, only fatter and balder and older. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have put it exactly like that, but I can see what you mean. But you've never seen him. Don't make book on it, but I think I have. <laughs> I made three phone calls. One to a crime reporter I don't like very well, giving him a false story on the death of Lois, Grierson's secretary. Another to my client, the mad scientist, alias Raymond Fox, and one to Dr. Birdwell. Then I went to my apartment and waited. My client arrived five minutes before the doctor. When Birdwell came in, my client said, Aha! That's he! He stole my secret formula. Now, now, Raymond, you're getting confused again. No. I'm the doctor, don't you remember? Th th that's not true. Your name is Grierson. Oh, he's much worse. These identifications. Now, you must try to remember, Raymond. Nobody's going to hurt you. Uh, but you'll be much sicker if you don't remember. But I do remember. I remember everything. Do you remember setting the bombs at Manning's house and the one you sent to Mr. Grierson's office? No, 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 no. Grierson isn't dead. You're Grierson. No, Grierson isn't dead. Only that poor girl. No, no, no. She didn't steal my formula. It, it was you. Oh, you're trying to mix me up. I'm trying to help you. Now, roll up your sleeve. <laughs> I'll give you something to quiet no. your nerves and we'll go back to the hospital. Put it away, doctor. You've helped them enough. Huh? Now, look here. This man is my patient. He needs medical attention. I won't argue with you, but I think he'd better get it from some other doctor. Right now, he's making more sense than you are. Ah, Just ah. keep on the way you're going, Spade, and I'll have you back in that wet sheet. I did it once, and I can do it again. Sit down. <laughs> you got delusions of grandeur. <laughs> Stop shaking, Raymond. I said you're making more sense than he is, and I can prove it. <laughs> you think you're very astute, don't you? No, I'm stupid, but I'm lucky. I should have tumbled to the whole caper when I found that you'd invested 50,000 smackers in Grierson Enterprises. When I found out that Raymond was an escaped patient, I should have tumbled to what that Denadrine vial was doing in Grierson's desk. I should have known then that you and Grierson were one and the same person. <laughs> I, I, I told when you. When I discovered that you'd paid Manning all that shakedown money, I should have known you were planning to knock him off and everybody else who could identify you. But it didn't work out that way. I got out of the car before it blew up. Dumb luck. And you can identify me as Grierson? I don't have to. <laughs> oh, God. Surely you're not counting on Raymond's sanity to that extent. He can't even remember that I was his doctor. Can you, Raymond? You're trying to mix me up. Did you stole my formula. I didn't kill them, did I, Mr. Spade? Now lie down on the couch and relax, Raymond. Don't worry about a thing. <laughs> well, doctor, what now? You relax, too. Okay, Lois, come on in. What? Lois! Why, Mr. Grierson, have you been sick? How dare you? How dare you ruin all my plans like this? You stupid girl! Oh, right. oh. Okay, that's enough. Come on, get back there. Get back. Sorry, sweetheart. I didn't mean to let him get that close to you. What were you trying to do? It was an experiment, just to see what would happen. It did. So that's the way your scientific detectives work. For a hard-boiled chap, you have the vaguest way of doing things I ever heard of. Well, uh... 
plans are all right sometimes, Doctor, and sometimes just stirring things up is all right if you're tough enough to survive and keep your eyes open so you see what you want when it comes to the top or something. A uh, spade, Dundee. I'm at home. I've uh, got two homicidal characters here, one sane and one insane. Now, if you can tell the difference, I'll let you give the story to the papers. And that, Lieutenant D, is the crop. You uh, picked the wrong one. Figures. It's as simple as this. Raymond Fox was the loony, but Birdwell, alias Grierson, conceived and executed the whole scheme, including the explosions. Don't worry about Fox. He's now back at the hospital working on a new secret formula. I don't know what it is, but it might be an anti-truth serum serum because that's how Birdwell got the Penetron formula, by using truth serum on the mad scientist to make him talk. Any way you figure it, he's crazy like a fox. His enemies are all dead or on their way, and he's as snug as a rug in a bug house. Period. End of Looney Tune. Well, of all... Well, just imagine. Well, it takes all sorts to make a world, I guess. Well, I guess you never spoke a truer word, Effie, but don't forget, a stitch in time saves nine. Don't feel too badly about it, Sam. Better late than never. You took the words right out of the horse's mouth, but it's later than you think, Angel. Tight that up, Angel, and while you're at it, see if you can think up a way to teach an old dog new tricks. Say, mister, if you haven't tried Wild Root Cream Oil hair tonic, why not get it tonight or first thing tomorrow? You'll be glad you did, for Wild Root Cream Oil grooms your hair neatly and naturally without giving it that plastered-down look. Wild Root Cream Oil also relieves annoying dryness and removes loose, ugly dandruff. Simply step up to your drug or toilet goods counter and ask for Wild Root Cream Oil in the big economy bottle, and the handy new tube that's easy to pack when you travel. Also, ask your barber for a professional application of Wild Root Cream Oil Hair Tonic. Again and again, the choice of men who put good grooming first. Well, here it is, Sam, and I've been thinking over what you said. Which? About teaching an old dog new tricks. Mm -hmm. You're only as old as you feel, Sam. Then send in the application for my old age pension. Oh, Sam, I won't let you talk that way now. You're just tired and nervous and run down. Yeah, backaches, stay up nights, sour racket. You're just feeling sorry for that Mr. Fox. I wouldn't worry about him. As you pointed out, he's safer where he is for all concerns. Mm -hmm. And after all, necessity is the mother of invention. What's that got to do with anything? Well, he's an inventor, isn't he? Oh, that. You see? All's well that ends well. Good night, Sam. Good night, Pollyanna. Pollyanna? Oh, she's the glad girl. Oh, no, Sam, that's Shakespeare, that old... You know best. All ashore that's going ashore. Good night, sweetheart. The Adventures of Sam Spade, Dashiell Hammett's famous private detective, are produced and directed by William Spear. Sam Spade is played by Howard Dove. Lorene Tuttle is Effie. The Adventures of Sam Spade are written for radio by Bob Tallman and Gil Dowd, with musical direction by Lud Gluskin. Gil Dowd directed tonight's broadcast in William Spear's absence. Join us again next Sunday for another adventure with Sam Spade. Brought to you by Wild Root Cream Oil, again and again, the choice of men who put good grooming first. This is Dick Joy reminding you to... Get Wild Root Cream Oil, Charlie. It keeps your hair in trim. You see, it's non-alcoholic, Charlie. It's made with soothing lanolin. You better get Wild Root Cream Oil, Charlie. Start using it today. You'll find that you will have a tough time, Charlie. Keeping all the gals away. Hiya, Baldy. Get, get Wild Root right away. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.